Hello, friends. This is Dave Hurwitz, executive editor at ClassicsToday.com, here with Mildred, who wants to play, as she always does before we do a video. Just what I'm getting started here. So let's have a good time, shall we? The object. You ready? Go get it. We now have Happy Cat, and I can talk about other things. Books. You know, I don't do book reviews very often on this channel, although I should probably do a few more because I'm very, very selective in the books that I recommend, music books. They have to be something that I think is really interesting and meaningful. There are so many just sort of hagiographical, you know, biographies and things like that, which I mean, you may be interested in your particular character, your fan or whoever it is, but that doesn't mean that, well, it's not enough for me to actually make a recommendation or to want to talk about it. But in this case, um, this is one of the absolute best uh, singer bio biographies I've ever read. I mean, comparable only to, to Vishnevskaya's bio memoir, you know, which is absolutely unbelievable. Oh, my goodness. Kalina, that's called. And if you haven't read that, you really need to read it. Um, it's amazing. And so is this for a completely different reason. This is the biography of Astrid Varney. It's called 55 Years in Five Acts, My Life in Opera. And it's written with Donald Arthur. Very, very well written, I might add. This is a beautifully written book. Now, Astrid Varney lived from 1918 to 2006. And she was one of the great singers of the 20th centuries. 20th century, pardon me, there weren't two of them not as well known as she should have been because she did not have a large career on disc until recently, until like live stuff started to get to get issued. And the reason she didn't was because she was very much her own person. She was a Wagnerian soprano. I mean, a serious, serious dramatic soprano. Her voice, I remember when I was first getting into Wagner and I was listening to like the Schulte Ring and everyone was talking about Birgit Nielsen, Birgit Nielsen, Birgit Nielsen, who was her friend, by the way. They were born in the same year, a few weeks apart. But Varney's career was a generation earlier than Nielsen, at least a, a singer's generation, a few years, half a decade, a decade before. She was the big Bayreuth Brunhilde before Birgit Nielsen showed up at the end of the 1950s. And, and she sang all the major Wagner roles. She sang, she sang Brunhilde and she sang uh, Senta and she sang, you know, all the like heavy duty ones, Kundry, you know, those people. And she also sang Salome and Elektra, you know, the big Strauss roles. She was remarkable. She also had some select Italian roles. Um, she sang Lady Macbeth, for example. Um, and then when her voice started to go, she got into secondary roles very effortlessly. She just loved to sing. But let's, I'm getting ahead of myself. She was not given the attention she deserved because at the beginning of the 50s, nobody was recording complete Wagner operas um, and in the studio, in any case. And when they did, um, they were doing it with people like Birgit Nielsen. And Leonie Rizinek, you know, and all of these people were her colleagues. She got along famously with them. And as I said, when I was first getting started with Wagner, a friend of mine who was a huge opera fan said, no, you should listen to Varney. She was amazing. And the truth is, she was. She was amazing. And thank God recently, um, you know, more of her recordings have started coming out. We've got her Senta with Kyle Berth from 1955 on Testament. She's the Brunhilde in the classic Kyle Berth ring. On Testament, the one that everyone says is the greatest ring recorded ever at Bayreuth and whatnot, et cetera, et cetera. Um, she's the Ortrud in the Savalish Lohengrin. Ortrud was one of her specialties. After she started doing the soprano leads, she started taking on the Seconda Donnas or whatever they call them in Italy, you know? Seconda Donna, the second ladies. And boy, did she do them. I mean, her Kostelnitschka in Yenifa was one of her great roles. And it's all, you can see it on YouTube. It's, it's, she's unbelievable. She did insane, crazy people, crazy, wicked, evil witch women like nobody. I mean, her Clytemnestra in Electra after she stopped singing Electra was incredible. And she's the Clytemnestra in the Burm movie, you know, where she, they're having that psychotic lesbian orgy and all that stuff. She wasn't happy doing that. She, she actually felt that Clytemnestra should be played as more of a noble woman who had some serious motivation for doing what she did. But, you know, that wasn't Gottfried Friedrich's idea. She's Herodias 
in the Teresa Strada Salome. And she sang literally until, well, she died when she was about 88. And until she was in her late 70s, she was still singing. She did the widow Begbik in, in Mahogany at, at its Met premiere. Uh, she sang Mama Lucia in the, in the, in the, uh, Ricardo Muti, Cavalleria Rusticana. She didn't care what she did as long as it was right for her. And she just loved singing because now we're going to get to it. This was one hell of a life. Both of her parents were singers. Um, and her father was, in addition to being a singer and empresario, her parents were Hungarian. They were introduced to each other by Fritz Reiner, of all people. She was born in Switzerland and, and raised in New Jersey, largely, um, after her father passed away suddenly, after her parents immigrated to America, um, her father married an Italian tenor who she loved very much and who apparently loved them. And they had a very happy childhood and life until her father just like inexplicably left the family, moved back to Italy and abandoned them in the U.S. But her mother was a very hardworking singer and the, their, the family business was opera. And she went into the family business and she went into it with as much experience and practical knowledge and intelligence as you will ever read in your life. She was a real Kunst diva, in other words, thoughtful. She got into her role. She understood them. She researched them. She knew the score by heart. She, she, she played the piano very well. She could teach herself these roles. This is just a fascinating portrait of an incredibly professional hard-working, intelligent singer who gave her life to her art. She did get married to uh, Hermann Weigert, I believe his name was. Um, it was her vocal coach. He was quite a bit older than she was. He died very suddenly. I mean, they only were married for about 10 years, I think, before he passed away in the, in the early 1950s. She never remarried. She eventually settled in Munich because Rudolf Bing, when he came in, started uh, sort of spending little attention with Wagnerian roles and treating the Wagnerian contract singers miserably. So she left the Met and had a, a, an extraordinary career in Europe, particularly at the Bayreuth Festival. She was one of the most beloved and highly respected singers in the profession. She had, it seemed, no enemies at all. She didn't like Herbert von Karajan in his early stages because she thought he was too full of himself and working too hard to be transcendental and just whizzing around with his eyes closed and no one could follow his beat which irritated her, but they made up and recorded a, an astounding Electra at the Salzburg Festival, which was released on Orfeo. Um, and you can actually hear it, after which Carrion said it was so great he would never conduct the opera again, and he didn't. So th this is, this is a, a, a person who, who should have been feted and celebrated along with, uh, you know, the greatest of the great. But it's only in the past 20, 30 years, other than pirate recordings, where we've seen systematic releases of her major roles, and they have been worth waiting for. That's not the point, though. What you get here is, is wisdom and sanity. I mean, and it's not just one of those... Uh, opera, opera biographies tend to be really annoying. It's like, and then I sang at La Scala, and the world fell at my feet. And, you know, it's like, eh, yeah, you know. She doesn't do it that way. She really talks about how she navigated 55 years in the business, how she managed to go from being the prima donna in all these major German opera roles to slowly and gradually reducing her activity, but she kept on going. She kept on going past the point where her voice actually was still there because she just loved it. She loved to sing. She loved music. She loved the theater. She loved watching her colleagues interpret the roles that she used to sing. She enjoyed everything about the act of putting together a really fine, dramatic, operatic production. And she knew more about it than just about anybody because, as she says, it was the family business. And the show must go on. I mean, she, like, never canceled. She was always available. She would step in for anybody. She was just the most amazingly collegial singer, completely humble and and bereft of, of you know, diva-ish attitude, but also um, no bullshit, no nonsense. She knew what she knew, and she didn't take any crap from anybody, and she managed for that reason to have a completely independent career focused on, on Munich and the German houses, 
uh, for an, an astonishingly long time. She really did. I mean, she even appears in the Shai Rake's Progress recording. You have tiny, tiny roles. She would do it as long as she could sing, as long as she could be with her colleagues and enjoying the whole the whole circumstance of operatic production. So this book, which is, is quite extensive, I mean, which has a nice discography and a decent index, and it's about 350 pages or so, um, is a, a wonderful memoir of an extraordinary career. And I've been reading it back and forth on the train, you know, commuting back and forth to New York for work, and it's been marvelous. And so I recommend it accordingly. If you want to read a really good, not gossipy, but musically interesting, really musically interesting story of somebody who was from, uh, you know, the top of her head and her helmet and the wings and things to the tip of her toes, um, a genuine, smart, professional singer. This is the book to read. It's, it's really quite astounding. So that's the recommendation. It's, again, 55 Years in Five Acts, My Life in Opera by Astrid Varnai with Donald Arthur. And uh, it's a marvel, and so is she. So keep on listening, friends. Thanks for joining me. Take care.